Hello and welcome back to another video. This is the start of another little series in which I'm giving you like an over the shoulder look at what I do when, when I test and develop mechanical or algorithmic trading strategies. Now I'm looking at another pair today. I've already actually tested this strategy on pound dollar and it didn't work out very well. If you want to see that video, then I'll put the links to that in the description below. But this series, I'm looking at another pair. I'm actually going to look at dollar yen now just to see how the strategy works and or if it was going to work on dollar yen. So those of you who haven't seen the first video, as always, first of all, let's go over the rules of the strategy. So what we're looking at is four hour chart. And so we've got our chart, four hour bars. We apply a 30 EMA. Look at the 30 exponential moving average. Now, to go long, now the, the rules to go long and short are completely just, just the opposites. So to go long, we're looking for the bar to be above the 30 period moving average. So whole bar, hold the body above the average, just like that. And then we're looking for an outside bar. This is going to be kind of the triggering bar. Now an outside bar is a bar like this where the body is outside of the body of the previous bar. So the high is higher than the previous bar's high and the low is lower than the previous bar's low. That's your outside bar. And one last condition is an up close. So the close of the bar is higher than where the bar opened. We could quite easily have had the opposite and still meet all those conditions. But those three conditions above the EMA, an up close, and of course, an outside bar. When we see all those conditions at the close of this bar, we literally just buy. So buy at the start of the, the new bar, the new bar, the start of the new bar, the open of the new bar is gonna be the same as the close of the old bar, unless it could be the first bar of the week and then there's a gap. Because um, we're looking at Forex and as you know, 24 hour markets. So either buy just as that bar is closing or buy just as the next one's opening. It's, it's that simple. So they're the rules. Like I said, this is a long and a short strategy. So opposite for the short, we're looking for an outside bar again, that's the same. But we're looking for the bar to be below, the whole bar to be below the 30 EMA. And we're looking for a down close, not an up close. And as soon as we see that, we short, we go short. And at the moment, we haven't got any specific exit criteria. I'm gonna play around with that. I'm gonna look at profit targets, obviously a stop loss, but we're gonna look at a variation of different profit targets and perhaps some timed exits just to see how things work out. But usually, if the entry signal gives a strong enough edge, then most stuff's gonna work, but that's for us to find out. So this is the first part. We go over to the computer now and get stuck in, start looking at maybe some time periods or time windows of the day where we wanna take these trades. So let's go over to the computer and we'll get started. Here we are at the charts then. First part of the development. Now, very quickly, before we start the development, just looking at the chart, and this top pane is 10 minute chart, and this bottom pane is a 240 minute chart or a four hour chart. Now, we are taking that signal looking at that four hour outside bar, but the way I program the software, I actually program it just to get a bit more definition, I program it on that shorter time frame. It's not really something we need to talk about at the moment, but just wanted to say. So if you're looking at, if we see the 10 minute chart, don't get confused. We're actually taking trades using these four hour outside bars. So that was just a quick note before we get started. So dollar yen, we're looking at dollar yen Forex pair. And first of all, we're gonna test on some data from 1st of January, 2008, through to the end of 2016. So quite a wide range of years there to test that data on. At the moment, the strategy is completely unaltered. So 
we're just taking every single signal. The only thing I have done is I've put in a stop loss and a take profit target, and I've just picked them. I've used 100 pips for, for both, so 100 pips for the stop loss and 100 pips for the take profit. Otherwise, the only exit there would have been was it would be a reversal exit in the opposite direction. So if we were long, then the only way we'd get out of that long is for a short setup to occur, which is fine, but it's not really how this strategy was intended. This strategy was intended to last hours, maybe a couple of days, and I don't think we would get those reversal type exits within that time period, that, that shorter time period. So for the minute, we're going to be working with take profits uh, as a fixed pip level. So let's have a quick look at the equity curve to see how it looks. And there's the equity curve, and it's pretty, pretty awful. <laughs> so possibly the stop loss and the take profit are way off what they should be, way off their optimum, but that's something we're going to find out. But for now, we are going to work with that 100 pips for stop and 100 pips for take profit. I think the best thing to look at now is looking at that time window. Now, what I mean when I talk about time window, we're going to look at a start time and an end time for these trades to occur. So we're looking for that outside bar on the four hour chart. Now, we're likely to see six bars within a 24 hour period, aren't we? Because it's a 24 hour market, Forex. So are there times in the day where these signals when we get an outside bar, are they better to take them at certain periods of the day than others? So are we better to take a trigger that's been triggered by an outside bar at 2 a.m. rather than taking one that was triggered at 1600 hours, for example? That's the first thing we're going to look at. We're going to start that by looking at a start time. So we can go from zero through to midnight to see where's the best time for that time window to start. This is the optimization report that I've done. You can see we've got my start trade up here, and we look, we got from 0, 100, that's 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and so on, all the way through to midnight the next day. And straight away, we can see that they're all terrible, they're all negative, ignore these ones. They're all negative, apart, the best ones probably from 1400 through to. 1600 that's probably the best area however that's it's probably a little bit late in the day so for now let's just stick with zero and we've already seen the equity curve for zero because that's unchanged so the next thing obviously to look at is an end time so we know that we're starting to take the trades at at zero and you know is it best to end trades at 4 a.m. or 1 p.m. Let's have a look. We can do an optimization on that too. So here we go. We're optimizing the end end time, again, from 0 through to 2400. They're all negative, again, <laughs> but I can see that the best one is probably from 1700. So we can take those. Let's have a look at that, see how that works out. And looking at the performance report, it's still awful. It's a tiny bit better, but still completely awful. So at the moment, things aren't looking too promising. Uh, could it be the actual trigger itself? Could it be that I've got that 100 pip stop loss and take profit way out? Or could it be something else? Next time, we'll continue the development and we'll actually look at those take profit and, and stop loss just to make sure that they're not completely wrong and it's throwing us off. So that's for the next video. Please follow on and see. let's see how this development actually pans out to the, in the end.